So what I want to do is just talk about my thoughts on centre of gravity and root positioning in characters and so on when rigging. First of all, I consider the whole centre of gravity thing to be a complete myth when it comes to character animation. The simple reason for that is this. An object has its centre of gravity based on the distribution of its weight or mass within the shape of its form. Now really, characters have no fixed form, and therefore a character in this pose will have a different centre of gravity to a character in, say, this pose. Therefore, centre of gravity or centre of motion is going to be variable in character rigs. And so if you wish to animate using centre of gravity or centre of motion pivot points, then likewise you need a controller system that will allow for that pivot point to be variable within your rig. Now, because of the way that, for instance, regular humanoids are constructed, the majority of their mass is contained within their torso. And therefore, whatever pose they get themselves into, the centre of gravity is always going to be floating around somewhere in the torso, usually at the lower or mid-chest point. So when it comes to placing our variable pivot point, we only really have to worry about this central mass area. So the first thing that I have is this, the global root object of my character. Now this can be moved around in the scene. It is a scene child and so exists in, you know, the scene world space. And so I can use that like a shadow root and move it forwards and backwards and simply animate my character on top of it. It is also, of course, the parent of the entire rig and that includes everything, the IK, the FK, the lot. Everything else in the rig is a child of this global root. So in addition to using it this way, it's really used to be able to position or scale or place the rig somewhere in the scene as befits the needs of the shot, more than it is used as a root item for animation. But the option is there for the animator. As for root items on the character that work independently of the IK, first of all, this is my main root controller, which is the root of the entire character control hierarchy. You will notice that I opt to place this point directly between the two hip pivot points. As you can see there, it is on the same level. A lot of people tend to place their root in one place and have the hips coming off with bones or joints running at angles. I have always disagreed with this for the simple reason that it works counter to the way that I think most bipeds tend to articulate. For instance, when we bend down to pick something up, we're not really bending at the spine. OK, we will bend at the spine a little bit, you know, we'll curl over forwards. But what's really going on is our hips are rotating. Effectively, our legs are coming up 90 degrees, and then the entire body, legs and all, is rotating back down 90 degrees. And so you get this effect when bending down. You rotate from the hip. Therefore, I put my root, which positions everything in the FK rig, and which rotates everything in the upper body at this position. For swinging from the hips, I create another controller, which is the immediate child of the root, and this in turn is the immediate parent of the lower body construction setup. And so this gives me my independent hip swing in turn, from this higher point, which is where an awful lot of people often tend to place their root object. Now, if we're going to talk about shifting the center of gravity, my root also has an offset item, which we can see here in the bounding box mode. This can be both translated and rotated. In my rigs, I keep everything in Euler coordinates because it's simpler when working in graphs. But of course, that gives us the potential to become gimbal locked. And so by having an offset that has rotation on it also, that means I can always rotate on a spare handle when in gimbal lock. But also, I can move the entire rig via this secondary route or this route offset independently of the route itself. What this of course allows me to do is move the position of my route relative to the rest of my object and change his centre of motion or centre of rotation in that manner. Similarly, if I wanted to have a shadow route set up, I could quite simply just position this at Y0, switch to the offset and move that back up again by the opposing amount, and then that would give me my shadow route method operating from the floor point. And the whole thing can be crossed over and switched whilst you're animating, giving the animator a range of options for how they wish to animate the character. If you were using the rig in that mode, then of course that means that you've only got the one item here between the hips, the secondary root, if you will, the root offset. And so assuming that a user wanted to always use the shadow root method and still have two offsets or two controllers, a controller and an offset at this point between the hips to solve for gimbal and the like. And one can quite simply just clone the item here. We can just name it the offset 2 for convenience. Make it a child of the original offset and make everything else that was 
a child of the offset, now a child of that. And we now have two offsets in our character, and we can put our root down at the ground if we want to. And so it's fully extendable that way, depending on how an animator wishes to animate the character and use the controls. And that is my personal view of root setup, pivot point, centre of gravity, motion, and so on. Thank you very much.